dang, man. This, this keeps getting better and better, you know. Better. Just something that I never thought I would see Ruby like. Seeing her cry, upset, be one thing, but for her to lash out. Remember, the entire time Ruby felt like this interesting but yet underdeveloped character. Where she was just the one that knew what to do, the happy-go-lucky. And when she had her feelings hurt, she would have her feelings hurt. But she always overcame every single time. She was the cliche shonen main character for so many volumes. But after the past volume 8, and then now this volume, it, she's not like that anymore. She is what you call growing up. I know it sucks. As we're children, we're full of innocence and the world is vast for us. It's easier for us to have hopes, dreams, and faith because we know so little about the world. You know, that's what Ruby was in the very beginning. She just wanted to be a hero. Then she started, she went to go outside, adventure, socialize, do her actual job. Realizing things weren't just black and white. Realizing good people will do bad things and bad people can do good things. And you yourself can screw up that could cause someone extreme harm or worse. And now she's reflecting on it. Now, she was apathetic in the in the apathy episode. I do remember that. But that was, as people would say, it's because of those apathy grim Okay, fine. I'll give you that. Whatever. But still, we got this one right here, man. <laughs> of all the places that they went to in this world, the Paper Pleasure place was my personal favorite. It sucks. We only get to see one episode of them, but then they're always going to the next place. But still, I enjoyed the Paper Pleasures. <laughs> they're, this is just so innocent and polite and just... And, it reminds me, I can't remember, but I think it was a British movie or show, what it was, where there are these innocent people, or was it creatures? Yeah, it was creatures. And they want, they were so polite and dumb, but yet ignorant that they would just die. It's just, just, just taking your eyes off of them, they would just die and stuff. So John has this entire um, schedule where he has to protect this town. In a way, you could say that this place is John's personal hell. Because, think about it, John never really was the main character. In a way, he could have been, but wasn't in this show. He was the leader, but he was never the hero he saw himself as. He couldn't be there for the one he loved. He couldn't really do much. He had to do ter a terrible thing to Penny and other things that had happened. He improved, yes, but it was never enough. He just wasn't there. Even now they're getting semblance of being a paddling, in a way. It just wasn't enough. So he falls to this place. He's waiting for the people who usually know how to solve things. Team Ruby and Ruby herself. And he stuck himself inside his village where they could just die at any moment by any, every little thing, and he is there to protect them, but by the price of him costing him his sanity, he's there 24 seven making sure none of them die. By fire, water, self-harm, whatever it may be, a collapse, he is there to make sure he protects them, and it's driving him insane, but he wants to keep doing it, because this is all he has as an identity. This is John's personal hell. His Alice, his wonderland is his hell. His perspective. He's not going through it right. Where Ruby and John are on different sides. Ruby is stuck in place. She was the one that was always going. The one never hesitating. Now she is always stuck in place. Doesn't want to move. Like a stubborn little rock. Then you have John. Who's always on the move? Just like this, the animal he rides, he's always on the move. He's really fast. He's he's occupying himself, so he doesn't stop to think. Ruby is stop, stopping and she's thinking, 
about her past actions and all the mistakes she has made. She's not used to this. So this is the first time she's doing something like this. And because of that, she doesn't know what to do. John is someone who would always used to run away from his mistakes. He would always, not run, but he would sit there and think about it. He was very negative about himself in the first volumes. And all. And even after he gained his confidence, he was still questioning himself whether or not he was good. But then, here he is now in this new world. Instead of thinking and hesitating, he is constantly moving, doing what he can, keeping himself busy so he doesn't have to think anymore. He doesn't want to think no more. He has to keep moving so he can distract himself from the pain. So we see these two characters switch sides. I hope you guys noticed that. So we see, because we've seen John go off. We've seen John go off, you know. Other times, whether it's on himself or someone else, he always go off. Not Ruby, though. Not Ruby. So here she is now, going off. Just went off. He even has Blake, has her ears going down, and he's like, girl, you try it. <laughs> the fact that she's going against it, this happens with the siblings, and I wish they would do more of it. I know they're friendly siblings, but having a big sister, I have two big sisters, but a bigger sister, yo, man. She she like, don't you try me. <laughs> don't you try me. Oh man, those memories very painful. <laughs> like, Who do you think you talking to? <laughs> you think you grown up? I guess I can hit you hard now, huh? <laughs> God damn. I'm laughing at my own pain. <laughs> but anyways. I bet Ruby did even further more things towards Blake. I bet Yang was sucker punched <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> like, I'll shut her up. She'll start thinking for a while. Oh, man, okay. I got sidetracked. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's even like, well, why and stuff? Why is it always me? Why do I have to be the leader? And stuff. But remember, she had a speech with John where John did think he was meant to be the leader. It was a very good thing. She just kept saying, nope. And stuff. This isn't the first volume. And and she says, "You're a good leader. I can feel it." And he did prove to be that by growing. Where Ruby kind of just automatically knew how to do it and with the plans. And now Ruby is like, "Oh man, I'm exhausted. I am tired, man. Just stop relying on me. Somebody else carry this burden, sweet Jesus." <laughs> And that's exactly what's going on right here. It's Ruby just fed up, you know. She doesn't want to deal with it no more, man. She even she didn't want to touch Crescent Rose anymore. Like, I can't do it. I pick up this weapon, and I feel like I'm not who I am, who I thought I was. And if she doesn't think she knows who she is anymore, then who is she? And, of course, the question that we keep seeing over and over again one of the specialties of Alice in Wonderland. I guess this is why Japan loves Alice in Wonderland so much. Because it's that question of who are you, in a way. It's the world where you question yourself. You reflect on yourself. And you look in the mirror and see Alice looking through the mirror. Or looking through the glass, either way. And that's exactly what's going on with Ruby. She's looking at herself through the glass. And she's wondering... Is this who I want to be? Am I proud of this person? Do I like this person? What is going on? Who knows? But either way, she is just having a change of heart. Where the other three who were going on this journey to try to find out who they are and what they need to do, Yang was someone who was obsessed with her mom, and she had to be the strongest, the one to protect Ruby, and she had her lost sight of her goals. Now she wouldn't go after Ruby, even going to her mom, not be there for her, but to get her little sister, Weiss, who was a stuck-up um, rich girl who just looked people by their appearance, judged a book by its color. And now here she is trying to be more open-minded, trying to be a better heiress to her family name, Blake, someone who would always run away, someone who mistakes her shadows, not opening up, and now here she is. She's opening up. And whether he, you don't like her non goth look anymore, which I do miss that a lot. This is the new her. 
the new her, I guess she is happy with, where she doesn't have to like she has a burden on her shoulders anymore. She has someone to carry that burden with her, to fight alongside with someone to trust. So there she is with her change. So they all have their changes. Everybody but Ruby. And here we are. The question is, when she comes out of this new change, who will she be? And that is the main question. So I enjoy this song. Very good episode, especially on of all days, but today is April Fool's, baby. <laughs> it's it's a, so far been a very interesting day of the things I've seen on the internet and what happened at work. Yeah, that was not funny. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course, hit that bell icon. Just have the background on Mad Bay. Sign it out.